in this session we will be <coughs> discussing about the absorption and stripping and uh, the topics which I am going to cover is basically the absorption tower design in relation to a design problem and how to determine the height and what are the different extreme form of that expressions and the situations like chemical reaction, lean gas, etcetera. So, to start with first we have to understand the absorption stripping this conjugate system in case of a specific case we are considering here in case of CO2 removal from air. Right. <coughs> So, here we choose the solvent to be ethanolamine may be right. So, first we have the absorption tower, it may be pack tower, it may be tray tower whatever it is. Here we deliver the feed gas loaded with CO2 and the carrier is here and from the top we are getting the clean gas right. Here we deliver this solvent to a pump so that is the ethanolamine plus water aqua solution may be right. So, we consider <coughs> negligible evaporation of water in this flowing stream of air. Now, from the bottom we will get ethanolamine loaded with CO2 right and that we again deliver from the top of the stripping column. So, this is absorption column that is stripping column right. From the bottom of which we deliver steam, which is the common stripping fluid we use. And from here it goes to steam condenser. So, we get condensate that is water and carbon dioxide, right. From the bottom it is the ethanolamine charge it to the solvent tank and you may add this makeup solution and from which it will be delivered to this absorption column via the pump right. <coughs> so, that is the absorption and stripping conjugate system. Now, why we have chosen ethanolamine? So, generalizing the question we can ask that what are the desirable qualities
of a solvent. So the first one, the solute must have high solubility in the chosen solvent. Right. But at the same time, we must be able to regenerate the solid. So, at the same time, it must be easily, it must, uh, it must have easy regenerability, right. That is by stripping we must be able to regenerate the solvent after absorption, right. So, the quality is solubility and regenerability. The second is volatility. Vola V O L A T L A T. The solvent must not be highly volatile or must not be volatile at all to minimize solvent loss. Third, must have low viscosity. Additionally, it must be cheap, non-toxic and non-inflammable. Right. So, these are the desirable qualities of a solvent. So, <clears throat> once we have selected the solvent, next let us think about the structure of a design problem for absorption. Now, what do you mean by the structure? Structure means what will be given and what you have to find out. So, given definitely the load that is design problem on absorption. The first one given will be given with G1, Y1, Y2 and X2. That means, inlet gas composition and gas flow rate, the target gas composition uh, which is the composition of the clean gas and the solvent uh, composition that means, whether it contains any solute after regeneration or not, because we are regenerating that does not mean that we are completely um, generating a pure solvent, we have to have makeup solvent. So, definitely X2 may be close to 0, but there may be X2 as well, right. So, find first this L or rather this uh, uh, 
uh, this L2 liquid flow rate needed tower height and say we are using pack column because this uh, gas phase resistance here is controlling in most of the cases. So, H t is the tower height and finally, the tower diameter. Right. <clears throat> so, tower diameter already we have an idea because we are using the pack column. So, pack for the pack column we know this flooding velocity and once the flooding velocity is known we will operate the column with 60 to 80 percent of this uh, flooding velocity and unlike the tray in the tray we have actually discussed. So, once we have flooding velocity we can calculate the operating velocity here the entire tower diameter is basically the active diameter for packed columns. So, from there we can calculate the tower diameter right. So, gas flow rate divided by operating velocity is equal to pi by 4 d square because there is no down cover or entirely the column area is the active area. Now, first question is how to calculate the liquid flow rate and the second the tower height. First, determination of liquid flow rate. So, which needs basically the minimum liquid flow rate calculation, right? Why? Because corresponds to this minimum liquid flow rate corresponds to infinite tower height and uh, serves as the threshold of L. L operating will be 1.2 to 2 times of L minimum which is commonly recommended. So, we have to we have reduced the problem of finding the liquid flow rate to calculation of minimum liquid flow rate ok. So, you see the operating line equation is G s into y minus a y 2 l s x minus x 2 in case of absorption. So, we have this operating line equation. Now, if I think of this uh, curve like this is the equilibrium relation. Equilibrium curve. So, operating line we cannot draw because we do not know L s right. However, we know what is x 2 and what is y 2 because this y 2 is equal to small y 2 by 1 minus y 2 which is given and x 2 is small x 2 by 1 minus x 2. And at the same time we know y 1 and that is equal to y 1 by 1 minus y 1 right. So, if I extend this I will get this point where it intersects with this equilibrium curve. So, this is one extreme point of operating line and somewhere on this horizontal line we will have the another extreme. Now, we have to calculate the minimum liquid flow rate that and this is the card equilibrium card which is convex downward right. So, minimum liquid flow rate must correspond to infinite tower height right. 
So infinite tower height means the driving force must vanishes. Here we have a non-zero driving force because this is the equilibrium, this is the operating line point. So we can set it here, right? So if I simply join these two points, I will get the slope is equal to Ls minimum by Gs because this is the line which is the limiting one. This one is an impossible operating line. Why? Because see, over this section we have absorption, but once the operating line crosses the equilibrium curve and goes below the equilibrium curve, we will have the reverse directional mass transfer that is stripping, which is not at all desirable, right? So, this is a kind of impossible operating line for absorption. Right? This is impossible operating line for absorption. So, the limiting operating line is this and we can calculate graphically that once we have these points known, so you can calculate the slope, we can simply join, calculate the slope and finally we get this L minimum. Now theoretically without any construction also we can do that. How? See this I have Y and let us say this is X1 star, right. So knowing Y1 we can calculate X1 star using equilibrium relation, right this one from this equilibrium relation because Y1 equilibrates with X1 star. So, X1 star will be the opposite or the re inverse function of this and from there we will get the inverse function is just a mathematical representation actually you have to solve and we will get this X1 star. So, <coughs> LS minimum by GS is simply equal to this Y1 minus Y2 divided by X1 star minus X2. So, from there we can get this LS minimum, right? Now things may not be as easy as this case and, and we can once we have the LS minimum, the LS will be 1.2 to 2 times of LS minimum and we can draw the actual operating line something like this and definitely this will be my X1, right. So actual operating line this is the limiting operating line and the last one is an impossible operating line. So here this is easy, the calculation is also we can perform analytically as we have a convex operating line downwards. But in many cases the operating line, sorry the equilibrium line may have a point of inflection, right. So, what is that? Let us check and discuss about it. Equilibrium line with a point of inflection say this is the equilibrium line, your y1 is here and your other point this is x2, this is y2. Now if I apply the same technique, I will get an impossible operating line, right? Because <coughs> it intersects this equilibrium curve, so this part will be operating in absorption, this will be stripping. So, limiting operating line here will be tangent to this equilibrium line, the marginal tangent. 
So if I draw that, I will get, sorry, I will get this sort of curve. Right. So this is the limiting operating line. And where it becomes tangent, let us say this point, which has got a coordinate x star y star, right. So, this x star y star is called the pinch point. So, if I, it is graphically it is easy, we have the equilibrium curve, we have the point of inflection, all are noted these points are generated and we will draw the tangent and from there we can solve for the slope. So, slope of this limiting operating line, the slope is ls definitely ls minimum divided by g. Now, analytically how we can calculate it? See, this is the equilibrium line, okay. So, y star and x star must satisfy the equilibrium relation, y star is equal to phi into x star, correct. And the slope of this, this is tangent, right. So, slope of this tangent is what? Slope of this tangent is phi prime or rather we can write d phi dx at x star y star must be equal to y star minus y2 divided by x star minus x2. So, there are two equations we have formulated, right, an equilibrium relation is known. So, solve for x star and y star. So, once x star and y star is known, so we can write this ls minimum divided by gs equal to y star minus y2 divided by x star minus x2. So, you can get the slope and from there we can calculate this ls minimum. So, this is an op equilibrium line with a point of inflection and from there we can calculate the limiting operating line and again we will use this ls operating will be 1.2 to 2 times and I will get that this is the actual operating line. Right. So, the things are done and we have got or we have answered the first question, the liquid flow rate needed. So, next uh, we will go for calculations of this tower height, right. So, determination of liquid flow rate is done, next is the calculation of tower height. See, uh, again let me draw the schematic, this is a packed tower <coughs> and here we have G1, Y1, L1, X1, again we are using the normal uh, representation that is not without, not going by the solute free, L2, X2 and this is G2, Y2. Here the liquid and gas flow rate are progressively changing. So, this is H equal to 0, this is H equal to HT, right. So, from this bottom, if I think a domain between a differential slice of this entire bed between H to H plus DH, what is happening here? See, here uh, we have g, this decreases g minus dg and here it is y decreases to y minus dy and here it is l and x which increases to l plus dl and x plus dx, right. And we introduce a new parameter 
द इंटरफेशियल एरिया ऑफ पैकिंग पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम राइट सो लेट्स 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 राइट ओके फाइन हाँ दिस इज इट सो दिस इंटरफेशियल एरिया ऑफ पैकिंग पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम इज ए यूनिट मीटर स्क्वेयर पर मीटर क्यूब दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कॉम्पैक्टनेस ऑफ दिस पैकिंग और इफ वी आर यूजिंग स्ट्रक्चर पैकिंग वी हैव टू डिटरमाइन दैट दैट वॉट एरिया वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम राइट सो यू सी दैट ओवर एच टू एच प्लस डी एच कॉम्पोनेंट बैलेंस ऑफ ए बेसिकली ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज दैट माइनस ऑफ डी ऑफ जी वाई जी वाई इज द अमाउंट ऑफ सॉल्यूट राइट दिस डिक्रीजिंग सो दिस मस्ट बी इक्वल टू the rate of mass transfer ky into y minus yi this is the mass flux now what is the area say this volume over the slice is a into dh where a is a cross sectional area the bed has got a cross sectional area is a right a into dh is the volume multiplied by small a which the parameter we have introduced newly that gives you the total area total interfacial area for the mass transfer and from there we got this ky into y minus yi a dh into small a now the fact is the fact is we know it's a binary system that one is carrier another is solute only one solute is being transferred from the gas to the liquid right so the depletion of the amount in total gas flow rate g minus g minus dg must be same as the depletion of that amount of solute because here we have a plus b right b is a carrier b is a carrier and a is being transferred so here we have a plus b right so a actually decreases a decreases not b b remains same Hmm. the carrier flow rate remains same so as a consequence we can say the total gas flow rate decreases because of the transportation of a from the gas phase to the liquid phase so the decrease of flow rate of a the solute must be same as the decrease of total flow rate of the gas that is carrier plus solute so that's why we can write this as minus of dg as well okay try to understand this minus of dg is a positive quantity because g decreases so as we move up g decreases so minus of dg is a positive quantity or positive quantity right uh because here here we have written g minus dg don't get confused with this specific sign here we should write if it is plus then basically uh this uh, this g g decreases to g minus dg so here dg is positive right but whenever i am writing d of g generally there exists a sign and here we consider this dg to be positive but if we change the sign as plus so definitely we know that dg is basically decreasing okay dg is negative so dg is negative so minus of dg is positive so that represents the positive amount of what uh is the amount depletion in the main gas flow rate total gas flow rate and this represents the depletion in the amount of the solute so they must be same because the only solute is being abstracted from the gas phase okay so <clears throat> 
minus of dg then is also equal to ky into y minus yi into adh, right. So, here you see dg is equal to d of gy. So, dg is equal to dy into g plus dg into y. So, dg 1 minus y is equal to g into dy, right. So, yeah. G into dy. Now, what will happen? Uh, just let me check once again. Yeah. Then dg, this dg is equal to so, g into dy, this dg, dg we can write as 1 minus y. Now, ky and generally ky is not singly reported, ky into a in a coupled form is reported, right. So, ky into a y minus yi into a dh with a minus sign, right, because dg is minus of this. So, g by A, there is a gas flow rate per unit area divided by K y into A 1 minus y into y minus y i with a minus sign integrated from y 1 to y 2 must be giving you total height. So, total height alternatively we can write as y 2 to y 1 g by A divided by k y into a 1 minus y y minus y i. So, this is my equation for tower height calculation, right. So, how will you actually calculate the tower height? Because here we need the plot in the small y small x coordinate space. Now, see We have the equation. So, we will first draw small x, small y, and in that space the equilibrium line. Y is equal to some function of x, that is the equilibrium relation. Right? So, operating line equation will be G s into capital Y minus Y2 is equal to L as already we have discussed x minus x 2. Now, in the small y coordinate we can change it to y divided by 1 minus y minus y 2 by 1 minus y 2 L s x by 1 minus x minus x 2 by 1 minus x 2. So, this is the operating line equation in normal coordinate system. So, for different x we can generate the y and can draw the operating line, right. So, this is x 2, this is y 2, this is y 1, this is x 1 and we have say considered this equispaced data points for uh, x and from there we have generated the y and we have got the y values, we have joined them by a smooth curve and we got the operating line. And prior to that we have to solve for this L s operating. Now, next at each and every point on this operating line, whatever we have generated from our data. Now, recall that this operating line is representing the locus that how the bulk gas phase and the bulk liquid phase composition is changing. So, we know now that y minus y i divided by x minus x i is equal to k x 
by k y or k x a by k y a because they appears in conjugate form right. So, in order to get this y i here we have to draw these uh, lines with the slope of minus of k x a by k y a. So, these are these lines right nearly parallel uh, actually parallel lines the slope is minus of k x a by k y a. So, from this slope we will get for individual x and y let us say this is x y coordinate. So, here we will get x i comma y i. So, once we have this x i comma y i, so you can calculate this entire integrand definitely there will be d y here and d y here. So, we will plot now this g by a by k y into a 1 minus y into 1 mi y minus y i right the entire thing and let us say this is the curve this is y 2 this is y 1 and we will do this integration by Simpson one third rule because we have generated equispace data points and that gives you the h t. Right. So, yeah, that gives you this H T. Now, there is uh, this H T is you see it is a complex expression and there was an observation which was uh, formalized and finally reported by Chilton and Colburn and from there they have introduced the idea of height of transfer unit and number of transfer unit. Right, what is that? HTU height of transfer unit and number of transfer unit concept. This was introduced by Chilton and Colburn. What they observe that uh, G by A, right divided by k y a into y i b m. What is y i b m? It is the log mean of 1 minus y and 1 minus y i. So, 1 minus y minus 1 minus y i divided by ln of 1 minus y by 1 minus y i right because y i b y b represents as 1 minus y. So, it is a logarithmic mean this is defined as logarithmic mean of this ok. So, uh, k y a into y i b m right it is this quantity is nearly invariant of location right and this is dependent on g how because if we think that pack tower is a pipe that this is this quantity is proportional to g by a that is the velocity to the power point 8 if we think about this uh, sira tate type of equation in mass transfer right and numerator we have g by a so this is nearly constant a quantity which is nearly constant so, what we can do we can write that g by a divided by k y into a y i b m which you can take out of the integral as it is nearly constant integral of y 2 to y 1 y i b m it is the numerator it must appear here into 1 minus y into y minus y i d y right. So, we modify the equation like this and this entire term outside the integral we call it h t u and this we call it n t u right. Now, <coughs> the thing is instead of writing in y i the interfacial concentration 
uh, is a gas phase. We could have written Y star, right? Y star is what? Y star is the equilibrium gas phase composition, which is or the gas phase composition which is in equilibrium with the bulk liquid phase. So there we don't have to draw this line with kx by ky. Instead, if we drop a perpendicular from here, I will get what? Here I will get y star. So y star is in equilibrium with x. See, this is y star. Okay. So accordingly, this equation, the height of transfer unit and the number of transfer unit, that will change. So what will be the format? What will be the expression here? So expression, you see, it will be first expression, we will get that uh, G by A, what we have written, again I am writing it, KYA into YIBM into Y2 to Y1, YIBM dy divided by 1 minus y into y minus y i. Alternative to that, we could have got G by A capital K O Y A into A Y star B M into Y2 to Y1 Y star B M dy 1 minus y into y minus y star where, so this is equation number 1, this is 2, where y star b m is a log mean of 1 minus y and, sorry, uh, 1 minus y star divided by ln of 1 minus y by 1 minus y star, right. So similar to gas phase composition, we could have used liquid phase as well. So L by A k x a right into x i b m x 2 to x 1 x i b m 1 minus x into x i minus x into d x and this will be L by a capital K O X into A X star B M X 2 to X 1 X star B M D X by 1 minus X into X star minus X. See so this way uh, we can write many other forms as well if I am using the solute free basis. So then things will change, right. So if it is a solute free basis then we will have this gs into dy. So there the equation will be see this gs into dy with a minus is equal to ky into a into capital Y minus capital Yi, right. So straight away we, we can integrate that we do not need this Chilton pole bond that gs divided by ky into a y2 to y1 we change the limit d capital y y minus yi is equal to this uh, ky into a into a into dh into small a a small a we have written so gs divided by a right so that is ht so we have alternative expression See this way we can go on for generating more equations like ls by a divided by k of capital X a integral x2 to x1 dx divided by xi minus x. Uh, so these are the idea of HTU and NTU and uh, next uh, there is a theoretical analysis that this, this uh, we can write as H T G, this is H T O G, this is H T L, this is H sorry capital, 
HTOL and this is similarly NTG, NTOG overall, this is NTL, this is NTOL, etc., etc. Now, there is a relation basically between HTOG, HTG and HTL. Let us derive it first. What is the relation? So, topic will be the relation between HTOG, HTG and HTL. So, you start from the overall mass transfer coefficient based on the gas phase which is 1 by Ky plus m by Kx. Right. So, what is HTOG? So, you multiply G by A, KOY, right, KOY A into Y star BM and that becomes G by A, KY A and here we write Y IBM into Y IBM divided by Y star BM that can be written plus um, L by A KXA XIBM into G by A uh, this is no this is L by A this is G by A and here we have M right then we have XIBM divided by y star bm right so by definition this is htog this is htg into y ibm by y star bm plus this definitely is this htl and here you see this is a cancels out so g into g divided by lm right. So, so, sorry, this is bracket. So, it is L divided by G denominator, numerator is M. So, it is inverse of this absorption factor, right. So, here A is absorption factor. So, let us say A F in order to, def okay, here A we have written. So, absorption factor into this HTL into XIBM by Y star BM. Right, this is a relation we can generate. Now you see that uh, if it is a lean gas, lean gas means what? Lean gas means if the inlet mole fraction or the mass fraction of this gas, sorry mass fraction, inlet mass fraction, if it is less than 5 percent, then it should be referred as lean gas. So, in case of lean gas, Y1 is less than or equal to 0 0.05, right, that is 5 percent. We have uh, this Y I B M, Y star B M, X I B M all equal to 1. So, relation becomes H T O G, H T G plus 1 by A H T O. Right. And in general, in case of lean gas, <coughs> if I am using this basic HT without going by this uh, number of transfer unit and height of transfer unit, we have Y2, Y1, G by A, 
1 minus y into y minus y i dy k y a. Now, in lean gas what we have 1 minus y is nearly equal to 1 right and g by a is nearly constant throughout the column right. So, g by a divided by k y a integral y 2 to y 1 dy by y minus y i. Alternatively, we can write g by a capital K O y into a integral y 2 to y 1 dy by y minus y star that also we can write. So, in case of lean gas right. So, there are some special cases which we must address. Uh, there is one special case that is a lean gas. Now, if I have a irreversible chemical reaction taking place between the solvent and the solute, so this we are discussing the special cases. The first one is lean gas, special cases. This is first. The second is irreversible chemical reaction. Here y i at interface it will be just or y star rather uh, y star is 0 because it will be consumed and uh, there will be some irreversible reaction right. So, there is no equilibrium or no x as 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 this x l is equal to 0 right or x is equal to 0. So, in that case h t will be g by a k o y into a l n of this y 1 by y 2 right. Third uh, we have now this uh, lean gas and linear operating line. Why it will be linear? As G and L are nearly constant. So, it is a lean gas example uh, linear operating uh, operating line, but that is not the condition lean gas plus linear equilibrium line sorry linear equilibrium line and we must say that as G and L are constant operating line is also linear right. So, what you can write or what we can draw here? The equilibrium line is this, the operating line is this, right. So, this is x2, y2, this is y1 and x1. And let us say here this is the driving force delta. So, uh, this is delta 1 and this is delta 2. So, for lean gas H t equal to G by A by K y A integral y 2 to y 1 d y by delta because this is y and this is y i interface. Hmm? So, as both are linear you see. So, as both are linear this equilibrium line is linear the operating line is linear the gap of their y coordinate must be linear with x because just think that if I write y 1 is equal to m 1 x plus c 1 and y 2 is equal to m 2 x plus c 2 then y 1 minus y 2 will be m 1 minus m 2 whole bracket x plus c 1 minus c 2. So, evidently it is linear with x. 
So here the same thing will happen and we can write that d delta by dy is equal to delta 1 minus delta 2 by y1 minus y2. So dy we are going to replace as y1 minus y2 divided by delta 1 minus delta 2 dy y1 into d delta, right. So ht is equal to g by a divided by k y a, then let us not write the limits because limits are going to change, then dy we are replacing y1 minus y2 divided by delta 1 minus delta 2 d delta by delta from delta 1 to delta 2. So that is why g by a by k y a y1 minus y2 into 1 divided by delta 1 minus delta 2 divided by ln of delta 1 by delta 2. So further we can write that g by a k y a into y1 minus y2 divided by delta log mean, right. Logarithmic mean of the driving force will be the actual mean if the operating and equilibrium lines are linear, right. So that is why basically in Chilton Cole Barn HTU NTU formalism, what they have used, they have actually considered this KY into A into YIBM, YIBM is this logarithmic mean. So there is a some parity between this logarithmic mean driving force and the chilton Colburns method where they have introduced this idea of HTU and NTU. So you are not going into that discussion. The last case, it is not a special case altogether, but here let us think it is an error analysis. We have the equation for each gas that y2 to y1 or rather this uh, NTU is y2 to y1 y i b m divided by 1 minus y or y star b m n t u means here we can write n t o g. So 1 minus y into y minus y star dy, right. So here you see y star b m is 1 minus y plus sorry uh, minus 1 minus y star divided by ln of 1 minus y by 1 minus y star. So it is a logarithmic mean. So logarithmic mean and it involves something which we cannot analytically evaluate. So we can simplify it, simplify and approximate it by algebraic mean or oh sorry arithmetic mean. And it can be done, it can be done basically if this 1 minus y and 1 minus y star, if they are nearly double, right, then we will have a difference of logarithmic mean and arithmetic mean by uh, say hardly 10 percent. So you can do that. So 1 y star b m, we replace it or approximate it as 1 minus y plus 1 minus y star divided by 2. So if I do that, what will happen? y2 to y1, 1 minus y plus 1 minus y star divided by 2, 1 minus y, y minus y star dy. So how we can further simplify it? So you see that this we can write as y2 to y1, 2 into 1 minus y plus y minus y star. So what it gives? Uh, this, uh, this, this gives you actually 2 minus y minus y star and here what is happening? 
2 minus 2y plus y. So, 2 minus y minus y. So, are the same divided by 2 1 minus y y minus y star dy. So, this the first term is y 2 to y 1 this 1 minus y 1 minus y cancel out dy by 1 minus y minus y star plus uh, and this this first case and the second case is half integral y 2 to y 1 dy by 1 minus y right. So, this is basically n t o g for lean gas right this is for lean gas and NTU plus here what will be the case. So, it is minus of ln 1 minus y. So, half ln 1 minus y 2 1 minus y 1 right. So, yeah that is the final expression ok. So, NTOG reach this is rich gas which means uh, greater than 5 percent. This can be approximated as lean gas corresponding NTOG plus a correction factor right. If I approximate it this logarithmic mean by arithmetic mean. So, if I by chance know this and if I add this correction factor I will get the value ok. So, these are the some special cases which we have, we have included this lean gas, then lean gas plus linear operating line, oh sorry lean gas plus linear equilibrium line, uh, lean gas plus irreversible reaction or rich gas plus irreversible reaction will also be more or less same. Then uh, we had this uh, corrections right. So, corrections is or approximation and simplification where we are replacing this logarithmic mean by arithmetic mean what we will have right. So, that is all about absorption for plate tower definitely we have already calculated it. We can use this Kramser Brown equation if the equilibrium line and the operating line they are linear, but non parallel for parallel we have also derived this equation. And if uh, the graphical technique for in case of this nonlinear uh, equilibrium light we have to go for staircase. So, that is all for absorption. So, in the next session we are going to discuss about this humidification.